All right, thanks you too. Uh, 545 right now. The chair of the University of British Columbia has resigned under a cloud of controversy. John Montalbano stepped down after a former judge found the school failed to protect a professor's academic freedom. The case concerns an allegation that Montalbano and the Sauter School of Business tried to muzzle the professor over a blog post questioning why the president of UBC suddenly quit two months ago. We should, as an institution, always be prepared to step up and defend and protect and support individuals who are being uh, questioned around academic freedom. As our province marked the great BC shakeout, officials admit more work needs to be done to ensure people are earthquake ready. At the fifth annual event, people were reminded that during an earthquake, one should drop to the ground, take cover by getting under a sturdy desk or table, and hold on to it until the shaking stops. A report last year found our province is not at all ready for a catastrophic earthquake. BC's Minister of State says our province's first full scale earthquake response test will take place next summer in Port Alberni. And an important day for all of us to think about whether or not we're ready for the big one to hit. Because it's not a question of if it hits, it's a question of when. And as uh, Minister Yamamoto said, it could happen at any time, and the odds are it's going to happen in our lifetime. So we need to be ready, and that's a shared responsibility. Vancouver's Kitsilano Secondary School is now closer to being seismically safe. The first stage of the school's seismic upgrades was marked with the official opening of a brand new wing. There are more than 100 schools in BC rated as high risk because they're deemed vulnerable to damage and structural failure during an earthquake. It's not only about safe environments, which of course is, is priority safety for our students, but it's also really important that we have proper learning spaces and we have the open spaces. It's no longer our schools appear to be institutional uh, in, in, in the optics. It's all about having those safe and fun places to learn. Home care workers laid off in Vancouver are calling for their jobs back, saying service to seniors has been affected. 89 home care workers from the nonprofit St. Elizabeth Healthcare Services have recently been let go. Some of those attended a Vancouver rally along with families which have seen service reductions as a result. Many were concerned for the workers that remain, saying they are often dedicating what would normally be their breaks or lunchtime to helping clients. In a statement, Vancouver Coastal Health says it still meets its clients' medical needs. Take seniors' care seriously. Fund the professionals who provide supports that allow our seniors to live with dignity and respect in their own homes. It's actually cost-effective. It means they stay out of more expensive acute care longer, and it provides, you know, the kind of supports that seniors and, and sick people need to, to have good quality of life. The province will soon be offering more support for terminally ill patients and their families. $250,000 will be put towards those needing palliative care in residential facilities. The announcement also includes the official opening of the Nancy Chan Palliative Care Ambulatory Clinic in Vancouver. That clinic will offer caregiver support and grief and bereavement services. When our mother Nancy came home from the hospital during her final days, we had excellent home care, and we also hired additional nurse care privately to be at home with us. So we were able to truly focus on spending quality time with our mom and not think or worry about being the caregivers or stress about making medical decisions during such a critical and difficult time. We realize that level of home care attention is not the case for most people and that we were very lucky and privileged. 549 right now, just ahead, a paranormal prank goes viral, plus Marty and